Hello guys, welcome back to another video, another video on the BMW 760 Ally project today and we're going to be doing something that desperately needs doing. Now ever since I bought the car I noticed that it didn't seem to drive too bad but one of the areas that desperately needs attention is the brakes. It seems like you step on the brake pedal and then there's nothing, 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 a little bit and then not a lot more like I have a feeling that the brake fluid has not been changed in a very long time now looking back at the service history that would kind of um, point to that way as well that, that there's literally no um, items there's no boxes on the service history ever that's that indicates that the that the brake fluid has ever been changed which is a little bit worrying um, if that is the case then we might be in for a horrific sight because yeah the car's 18 years old now brake fluid should be changed every two years or so um so yeah i think we should uh, get outside and let's get cracking so as you can see we have the car up in the air but before we go ahead and take all of the wheels off what i'm going to do is actually take a look at the brake fluid reservoir and i believe it is underneath this cover this uh cabin air filter uh, cover here, so we'll remove this and then let's take a look. Get that nice and easy. Okay, so we've took the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir. As you can see, the fluid itself looks pretty dark. I don't know if it's the worst I've ever seen, but yeah brake fluid should be near on clear it sh definitely should not be anywhere near that dark so this desperately needs changing out today i guess next thing to do then is remove all four of the wheels then we can access the brake calipers Okay, so before I start draining from the caliper straight away, I'm actually going to drain what I can from the brake fluid reservoir because there's no point pumping this dirty fluid through if I don't need to. So I'm going to try and remove most of this from here directly. So I have one of these turkey basters. I'm just going to put this inside and try and suck up as much as possible. We should be able to have a closer look the condition of the brake fluid as well that's the color that we're working with obviously when you are draining it from the brake fluid reservoir just make sure it doesn't go below the minimum I don't think we're going to be able to anyway because there is a screen filter in here so the level is just above the minimum right now as you can see I've put the dirty old brake fluid in this container here and then I'm going to start filling it up to the maximum with this dot 4 brake fluid and a big shout out to Westway Lubricants they actually sent this out to me um, I've used these guys a bunch in the past if you are looking for some good quality you know no frills no you know fancy advertising and no um, fancy labels this is the correct proper stuff at a decent price there will be a link in the description box below so make sure to go check these guys out okay take a look at how clear this is this is what brake fluid should look like i'm just going to fill this up to the maximum so now that the brake fluid reservoir is full, I've put the cap back on and now we're going to head to the furthest caliper away from the master cylinder, which usually is the opposite side of the car on the rear, but you need to make sure where the um, brake lines are rooted. Sometimes they can go across the axle and then towards the front, but I believe in this 7 series they actually go individually to the front so this side here will be the furthest away now if you have a look at the bleed screws themselves they look very very rusty now if you just go to try crack this loose with a open-ended wrench 
you'll just end up rounding this. So what I like to do is crack this loose with a deep socket first. So on the rear then, it is actually an eight millimeter. There we go, that's cracked loose now. Can just tighten it back up. So now this is an eight millimeter spanner. Now this is the homemade brake bleeder kit. It's essentially just a bottle with a hose into it and uh, this is for the two person method so what i'll do is put the hose onto the pipe crack it open well I'll get the person to push down the brake crack it open and then close it and let them lift off the brake and then keep going back and forth until we get all of the old fluid and any air in the system out so yeah let's get the wrench on here the eight millimeter wrench and then let's get this pipe on here and then we're all set up so there we go then we are all set up just need to get the other person in the car start pumping the brake pedal to build up some pressure and then hold down the brake pedal and i can open up the valve and then go from there up down up down up down up down Okay, so that is one quarter now done. Round to the other rear one. Funnily enough, this one's actually a different size bleeder screw, so I'm guessing someone must have stripped one in the past and have had to replace it, but this one is a nine millimeter. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down. And now that the rear calipers are fully bled, it's time to top up the brake fluid reservoir because this is probably starting to get pretty low now. You do not want this to go below the minimum because then you're going to start introducing air into the system. So you need to keep this thing top top. And now it's time to move on to the front calipers. And in our case, these take an 11 millimeter wrench. Right down. down okay then so that is both of the front brake calipers now bled as well and I've also topped up the brake fluid reservoir that is up to the maximum and we have left out of this litre bottle around 400 millilitres. So that means we've gone through around 600 millilitres in total. And this is what the original stuff looks like. Yeah, that's nasty. Now, if you have spilt any brake fluid, it's very important to make sure that you clean it up because it will eat through your paintwork. I like to just give this entire area a good clean up. Now we can plug the sensor back in and reinstall our cabin air filter box. There we are. And now we just need to get all four wheels back on this thing and that'll be job done. Okay then, so there we go. That is the brake fluid flush now done on the BMW 760LI. Now I haven't actually taken the car out for a drive yet. The car is still up in the air, still got a few jobs left to do while it is in that state, but I'm sure it's gonna make the world of difference. When I've done this in the past, like when I've done it on my E46 and on the BMW 130i, it honestly made the world of difference. If you notice that your braking performance isn't where it should be, don't always assume that it's your discs and pads that are shot. There's a good chance that you may just need a brake fluid flush 
honestly it really does make the world of difference i'd highly recommend doing it if you have no history of it being done anytime recent given the fact that i drained out around 600 milliliters or so it's pretty fair to say that you know i've got the majority if not all of the original brake fluid out i will more than likely be doing another brake fluid flush when i get onto you know, replacing the brake hoses and things like that. I'll do that at a later date though. But for now, that is another job done on the BMW 760LI. We really are starting to get there now. Remember guys, if you do need some brake fluid or you want to check out Westway Lubricants, there will be some links down in the description box below. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. Please remember to give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I'll see you all in that next one. Peace!